to episode four of Good Witch Knits, a podcast all about crafty things that I get up to in Sacramento, California. My name is Jillian. That was Sebastian, or Bossy the Cat, who I thought was going to be my co-host today, but I guess he's got other plans. We'll see if he wanders over here again. Um, I can be found on Instagram, where I'm most active as Good Witch Knits, and on Ravelry as Jillian J. Jackson. It is a windy day here in Sacramento, um, and I hurt my back, so I can't be moving around too much, so both of which are good reasons to stay inside and knit and record another episode of this year podcast. Uh, so jump to jump right in. Let's talk about what I'm wearing. Let's see if I can get a good angle. The light's not the best. Uh, this is the Perkin Co Perkins Cove pullover designed by Pam Allen. I knit it out of one of my favorite Quince Co bases, Sparrow. It's 100% women. Um, and yeah, I love this top. I don't remember the name of this colorway, but it's fun. Got the yarn at Twisted in Portland. The design calls for three-quarter length sleeves. I did not have that much yarn and wanted a light breezy top, so I um, just found off at the sleeves. What else does this say? Oh! Hey, buddy! He's gonna clean himself back there. No big deal. Um, this pattern calls for using two different needle sizes. A smaller one, and then progressively getting larger for the shaping of the shirt. I just used the same largest size for the whole top, and did the A-line shaping wall blocking kind of, but I, I wanted it to overall have this like drapey loose look, which I think I got. I dig it. So I have quite a few finished objects to share with you. Not all of the f objects I wanted to finish by recording another podcast are completed, but uh, I just will have too many to talk about unless I start recording now. So let's jump into it. I'll start with the one that's closest to me. I finished my Irving socks designed by Jacqueline Salem. I love these socks. As soon as I saw them on Instagram, I knew I had to make them. They have this excellent, they have this really cool Art Deco inspired design on them, which is pretty great. Some cat hair there. Mm. Some cables. I knit them. So I knit these out of Storyteller yarn. She is an indie dyer out of the Lake Tahoe area. I picked up this yarn at Ruffle Stillskin, my local yarn store. Um, and this kind of grayish, bluish, speckled goodness. It's called her Streetwalker colorway. And then the toe, I made a contrasting toe that, I'm trying to remember the dyer. I picked it up at Gather Downtown LA in Los Angeles. Um, it's a dyer out of Maine and all of their, let me pull her strap over that, she won't do that. Uh, all of their yarns are inspired by literature. I'll pop the name down below. But like a nice darker multi there's some like reds and blues in there I wanted a contrasting toe but I didn't want it to be like too crazy but yeah I love these socks I knit them uh two at a time on my Chiagu size one needles and I know small it's got small feet and I like my socks snug an alteration I made on these socks, uh, it calls for, I think, like a short row view in the pattern, 
can't remember exactly, um, but I prefer a heel flap and gusset on my socks. I'll talk more about that later. Um, and because the smallest size, I don't think I'm giving away too much about the pattern, but the smallest size of this, the, the pattern part of the sock continues on the back. I wasn't sure if I would be able to do a heel flap and gusset, not make it look weird, but it worked out fine. So, yay, Irving socks. Uh, designed by Jack and Salem. Love them. My next FO, got a big old pile of stuff in here. Uh, actually finished well before these socks are the Sterntaler socks. I don't know, I don't speak German. Um, this is a testament for Becky Sorensen of Soprano Knits. It, it, uh, you can get this pattern free by subscribing to her newsletter, I believe. Um, and it's like a really simple pattern sock using a German twist cast on. It was my first time using that cast on. Just cat hair on everything. That's how things go in this house. Uh, it's a German twist cast on uh, and a twisted rib. It calls for a twisted rib, which was my first time doing that on a sock and I really liked it. And then it has this seed stitch panel in the front and the back that kind of fades out. I think it'd be a great first pattern sock. So I knit these out of Valeria di Roma, 100% merino wool. I have it there. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, nope, definitely not 100% wool. <laughs> um, it's 60% wool, 40% acrylic. And I picked this yarn up in Spain when I was there a few months ago. So this is what this one is doing. Yes, I went to a few yarn stores while I was in Spain and I wanted to get some yarn that was made in Spain. So with this sock, this is my first time doing an afterthought heel and really anything other than the heel flap and gusset, which I haven't tried other heel techniques because the heel flap and gusset works pretty well for me. Um, when I've knit socks for other people, a uh, complaint, no one really wants to have a complaint when I knit socks for them, but uh, an issue is fit around the ankle. So Becky's pattern called for this and I know that afterthought heels and other heels for socks than heel flap and gusset create a tighter fit. Um, so yeah, I tried it, but I really don't like it. And maybe it's because I still haven't worked out the length that I really need to knit the socks to before reducing for the toe. Um, it's just so tight in this area of the sock. I've looked up some techniques that you can do to avoid this issue and still put in an afterthought heel, like knitting a few rounds and then um, starting the heel, but I don't know. We'll see. I might explore different heels, or I might just do what works for me. I'm also not sure that, so I love knitting these socks, like this is no fault of the pattern at all. I'm just not sure if this is what this yarn is meant to be, because I really love this pink yarn, this color. Can you tell I like <laughs> things in this color range? Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what comes of other finished objects do I have? I don't see anything right here. I knit a baby sweater. I have a new, oh, hi buddy. We have a new little cousin in my family. Her name's Matilda and I knit a little baby dress for her. I'm looking at my show notes because you know that that's how I manage her. It's the Kala's dress. I'll insert some pictures here. This, it's a free pattern available on Ravelry. It was designed by Madeline Nelson. Um, 
and Kallis apparently in Swedish means party, so it's like a little party dress. Um, I knit it out of Plymouth Encore, which is 75% acrylic, 25% wool, and I used my size 8 Knitter's Pride interchangeable needles. It was a super fun knit, and oh, I'll, she, it, I knit the size three to six months because babies are all different kinds of sizes. Um, I don't know, it just seemed like a safe size range to knit for her. My cat is kneading my skirt, which is very annoying right now. Sebastian, come on, kitty. Um, but the mother already sent me a picture of her baby wearing it. I'll, I don't know, I'll ask her if, if she is okay with me inserting a picture. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for finished objects, actually. I thought I had a lot more. I guess that's it. So FOs. I tend to be more of a monogamous knitter. Uh, I get a project idea in my mind and like I have to work on it until it's done but that currently is not the case. I've been really excited by some designs that I've seen on Instagram and in podcasts and I've been casting stuff on so let's get into it. Okay one work in progress that I still have that I think I've had on every episode probably. Probably not one. I've been working on it a while. It's my Osinato sweater. Designed by, I always have to look it up. I'm sure I will. It is in the fall issue of Amijusu. By Camille Rossell. And it's a great textured pullover. It's knit in pieces that you then block and seam together. And I really like the structure of seamed garments better than, like this is a top-down garment and it's loosey-goosey and uh, it's fine with these really short sleeves because this boat neck kind of like hugs me a little, I'm okay with that. But anything with long arms, I don't, I don't really like the top-down uh, seamless construction. I need some seams, I need some structure holding me together. Uh, so I've completed all the parts of the sweater and I am now picking up the provisional cast on, cast on ends and doing an I-cord bind off, which is this is my first provisional cast on and I-cord bind off. It's really easy, it's not hard at all. Um, you can see like this is the right side, wrong side, this is the bind off. So part of why I'm still working on this, um, I originally bought the yarn that I'm knitting this out of. It is Canopy by the Fiber Company. It's a wool, bamboo, alpaca, wool, bamboo, alpaca blend. Um, and it's in this really fantastic kind of brown purple color. They call it sarsaparilla. But this yarn is discontinued. I got it on sale because it, you know, they only had so many skeins left. And I ended up not having enough yarn. And I had to order another skein off of, I think I got it off of Webs. And they, they still have a bunch on there if you like this yarn and want to get your hands on it before it, it is all gone. Uh, I think they still have canopy in other weights. It's just the worsted weight that they I'm getting rid of. Um, yeah. So where I'm at right now, picking up the provisional cast on, binding off. I still need to graft together the have like this uh, waist yarn holding it together, which I think is also a canopy. I'm not sure. Um, from a different project I did. You graph the two sides of the sweater together. You need to do that too, and then pick up a knit collar. It's going to be done. It will be done before I record my podcast next, and it's going to be done before stitches, even though I think this is going to be way too heavy and hot 
to where to stitches west. It's gonna happen. It just needs, I need to finish it. I'm knitting these on my size five interchangeable. There's Pride Rosewood needles, which are my preferred needles of choice for most of my projects. Done. Next work in progress. Sorry there. Sebastian moved, uh, knocked the computer. I see him. We're all settled now. It's all good. Just gotta readjust the computer. Okay. So, my first work in progress is, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, but it's the P, P, Q, U? Q, 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 U. P, Q, U. Should have practiced that before starting. Oh, and I'm at the beginning of the row. It's fantastic. Um, so the P, Q, U shawl, which means I love you in what I think is an indigenous Chilean language. Uh, yeah. So I was bumming really hard two weeks ago. I was just in a funk and knitting on anything I had going wasn't taking me out of it. Um, I follow Marcella Chang, who Marcella Chang is the designer of this shawl. I follow her on Instagram and she posted this new design. And because it's cool zigzags, I was looking for something kind of graphic to use both of these yarns in. So I kept it on. And it's really fun. It's making me super happy. So this is a project that's definitely outside of my comfort zone. Um, I'll talk about the yarns. So this kind of the speckly Stellina yarn that's kind of a peachy, creamy, almost gold. Um, this is Valkyrie, Valkyrie Fibers. I think it's in her shimmer base. Let's see, I actually have it up here. This is Valkyrie Fibers in her shimmer base. It's a fingering weight yarn. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon, and then some of that Stellina in there. My mom gave this to me as a birthday, was it birthday or Christmas? Same deal, around the same time. Uh, she picked it up at a trunk show that Valkyrie Fibers had at Rumpelstiltskin, and I really love this yarn, and so my mom picked it up, and I was like, oh, it's like really my colors. And then she gave it to me for Christmas. It was Christmas. It was a happy surprise. Um, and I'm knitting it with Anzula Shimmer. What, let me see what they call this base. Nebula. Anzula Nebula. Which I think this is an indie dyer actually out of, it's Fresno or Stockton. It's a valley city near Sacramento. Um, it's in their opal colorway. And it's a little lot of sparkle. There's a lot of sparkle in this, uh, this shawl. I'm really, really enjoying knitting on it. The pattern is very intuitive. It's easy to read your knitting, to know what you need to do. Um, in the original pattern, it calls for alternating throughout the entire shawl. I really love the speckles in this yarn, which is very fittingly called Victorian Christmas. I adore Victorian Christmas. It's my favorite kind of Christmas. Uh, so I wanted to show that off a little more. So I've been adding some chunks of just the Valkyrie fiber. Valkyrie fibers in there. I'm really enjoying knitting on this. Um, I don't know if the person who this will be for is watching, but it's going to turn into a gift knit. Uh, 
my last work in progress, just like a simple vanilla sock that I, oh wow, I like really just cast this on. Um, I'm knitting it on my nine inch circular Haya Haya Sharps. And I'm just knitting up some, I think this is Stroll. Selena yarn from Knit Fix. Um, I like that it. I think I'm gonna use some of this mini that I got. It's also Storyteller yarns, but it's not dyed by the owner of Storyteller yarns. It's dyed by her seven-year-old daughter. pretty adorable. Okay, I think, is that all I have for works and progress? I think I have a lot more. Oh, and that's living in my Raquel Francia. Francia? Sorry, Raquel. I don't remember how to pronounce your last name. Um, living in a project bag that I picked up when I was at, in Spain at All You Knit Is Love, and it has these really adorable little woodland scene from Snow White from Gord. Super fun. Okay. So I have some recent acquisitions that I want to talk about. You know when people host giveaways on Instagram and you enter them and you never win? I won an Instagram giveaway. I won one. I mean maybe it's because only like 10 people entered it and I had three entries, but whatever. I want something. Um, so Rimple Stillskin, my local yarn store, they recently went to TNNA, and while they were there, they visited Sin City Yarn, which is a yarn store in Las Vegas. And I thought it'd be fun to pick up some yarn and have a giveaway. And this is what I won. I think it's called Wild Aces. It's 100% Merino, but look at these crazy colors, you guys. This is very out of my comfort zone. It's the theme of this podcast episode. I'm knitting things that are outside of my comfort zone. I'm knitting things that are outside of my like maroon, mauve, dusty pink, and gray jam generally um these are definitely my grandma's colors and I think I want to knit something brioche with this like some kind of like neutral in here with it it's so fun I'm excited and I want something Sebastian and Harry. So I'm curious, when you knit, what what do you consider in your comfort zone? Like what's your go-to knitting patterns and knitting palette? And do you ever try and mix it up? Do you want to mix it up? Are you trying things outside of your comfort zone or like you know what you like, and you stick to it. I'm curious. Other acquisitions. Uh, Invictus Yarn recently had uh, a trunk show at Rumpelstiltskin to kick off their, their hosting a cow. And I picked up this gorgeous mini skein set. It's 100% or 80% merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere. And it's just so beautiful. This is very in my comfort zone. <laughs> um, and I think I'm going to participate in the Olympic cow that Rumpelstiltskin's hosting. Um, 
don't remember the name of the cowl. They picked three patterns, um, and one is this kind of like sampler cowl with different designs, and it is actually designed to use minis because they're so cool and popular. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to participate in that, add another lift to the collection. Okay, so fashion's gone. Chipped out of my lap. Kind of hurt. That's why I stopped recording so I could have a moment. Um, so to end, I want to talk about Stitches West, which is coming up. Stitches West, woo! Um, it's my first time going to Stitches. I'm very excited and yeah, I'd love to meet people. Are you going to Stitches? Uh, do you have any tips for going to Stitches? I'm going to be there Friday night, Saturday all day, and Sunday all day. Um, I signed up for one class. There was a, like a cool and old felting class, which I've always wanted to learn about felting, so I signed up for that. I'm going to be staying with my mom and our friend, who's also a knitter. I'm going to go to the pajama party. don't really know what to expect there, but it should be fun. Um, yeah. So, are you going to Stitches? Is it super fun? I looked at the vendors. It's a crazy awesome vendor list. I need to create a budget for myself, I think, so I don't, like, A, go crazy, or B, just get really overwhelmed and then not get anything at all, which I sometimes do in situations like that, and then I'm really bummed. It's not good either way, on either end of the spectrum. Um, yeah. Other knitting related news, I started a knitting group here in Sacramento. I can't remember if I've talked about that on any of the podcasts yet, but um, if you know where Old Soul at the Weatherstone is in Midtown Sacramento, we are there every Wednesday, or um, every first and third Wednesday. You can find us knitting there. Last Wednesday it was a lot nicer. I've been in the 70s here in Sacramento. Don't hate. I know there's some really crappy weather going on around the United States. Um, it's gonna bite us in the ass when it's summertime. It's gonna be so hot. But right now it's like 70 degrees and really nice. So we're able to sit outside on a patio around a fire pit table, which was a little precarious with the yard, but we're all adults and made it work. It's nice to not only like share company with other people who can geek out about knitting as much as you like to, but it's just really cool to uh, create a group of people, you know, like I was really wanting this thing and I couldn't find this thing um, and I was really scared I thought about me, like putting a call out for a knitting group for a long time but uh, the thought of no one wanting to come out and what failure I guess would feel like just really paralyzed me uh, <laughs> kept me from doing it paralyzed is a little dramatic uh, I just like perfectionism and made me procrastinate on making an editing group, essentially. Um, so it's just a nice reminder to, I don't know, if you want, if you want to do something, just do it. And, yeah. Those are my wise words. Okay. That's all I have for you today. Um, let me know if you're going to Stitches West or have any recommendations for first-time Stitches West attendee. Um, let me know if you're knitting anything, anything outside of your comfort zone or if you think doing that is just stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, and I'm going to work on finishing the sweater and work on my posture because my back really hurts. <laughs> Um, yeah, lift things the right way, you guys. I hurt my back lifting a food processor from the bottom shelf up to, up to my kitchen counter. 
proper posture is real. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna avoid the wind because I don't like it. The wind's bossy. I want my hair to look a certain way and the wind has its own ideas. Don't tell me what to do. Alright, just let me know. Till next time.